We are here, myself and Sir Steve Redgrave, beneath the blue, grey and white mottled skies on the banks of the Thames at the Remenham Club where the Henley Women's Regatta is going to be taking place behind us all through the morning to reflect on events taking place in Germany. But before that we're going to talk to Miriam Luke here, who has uh, Miriam Batten, won a silver medal in the Sydney Olympics uh, 12 years ago, but who also, I think it's tomorrow isn't it, yes. you take control of the whole of the, uh, the women's Henley Regatta, which is a bit of an onerous responsibility. Well, when I was asked, I thought, oh, what a great opportunity. And then over the weekend, I've actually got a handle on how big the job is. This regatta really is the pinnacle for club women's rowing in this country. And it's also a huge part of that stepping stone pathway that our junior and our end of 23 crews are taking on their way to Olympic success. So our future is rowing here today. And of course your predecessor, who gives up the job today, has done it for the last 25 years. So have you signed up for a quarter of a century of this? Uh, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> don't say that to me. No, no, I, I would be delighted to be able to last as long as Di has. However, I think the task is much bigger than it was right at the beginning. The, the regatta's grown to 1,500 competitors now. We have over 40 crews from abroad here, predominantly from the USA. We have many of the universities from the States come over as well as the schools. We have some crews from Holland, crews from Belgium, crews from Denmark and Norway, as well as a couple of crews that have come all the way from Australia. So it's a, becoming an international event. We mentioned in Australia, we've got some pictures here of, of your moment of triumph in, in Sydney 12 years ago. How much, how much has women's rowing changed in the last decade or so? Massively. Through the 90s, we had an exponential growth in women's rowing. It was phenomenal. It, it, it's reflected in the number of competitors and events. But also the standard has gone up. Phenomenally, and that's reflected in, in how we're doing at Olympics and World Championships too. And what do you put that down to? I think some of it is an increase in women wanting to be active, an increase in the number of women rowing at clubs, predominantly due to some of Steve's success and some of the success that we've had on the women's side. Um, and also a lot more schools um, are, are rowing and they're also feeding into clubs. So many clubs that didn't have junior sections before now have very, very active junior sections that are continuing to row as they get older. You mentioned Steve there. You, you see, you're, you're a poster man to <laughs> millions and millions of women who've taken up rowing since you since you've taken up yeah. your oar. Um, we've got some pictures here of uh, a few, few days ago, actually, on the Thames with the two of you together. What a, what, what, how was this for you, Miriam? I, it was amazing. It was absolutely phenomenal. I'm just checking my blade work to make sure I'm in time with Steve. I have had a bit of criticism <laughs> from people. But it was like rowing in lots of mini Olympics. Every single bridge we went under, there was another 30,000 people cheering to the point where it was like 1.2 million people were there. Yeah. It was a very, very special day. Would, you, would it have helped if Gary Herbert had been coxing that, do you think, or not? Certainly wouldn't have done. No. In fact, Matthew got a bit tired by the end and he went and steered the boat. So. <laughs> well, listen, good luck with uh, the next 25 years. Thank you. And um, <laughs> that, that's, that's a very rueful smile you're giving me. <laughs> anyway, but uh, anyway, the, the rest of it, and listen, uh, you, you know, the, the number of people here today, there's a great atmosphere here. So, you know, may you have many more days like this. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for talking to Thank us. Thank you.